Welcome to Connecting Communities, a collaboration between people in Syracuse, New York, Bloomfield, New Jersey, and Makanda, South Africa. Connecting Communities provides people on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean an opportunity to learn more about one another through conversation. And to see, despite the 8,000 miles between us, we're more alike than we are different. This podcast is supported by the John Ben Snow Memorial Trust. For more information, go to unkululeko dot org slash podcast let's go dwelling on today is about mental health um what do we think when we talk about mental health what comes to your mind i'd like um all of us to engage on this i think having like an abundance of schoolwork and with if you have a job or an extracurricular can take a lot of dedication can take time from your um priorities and that can cause um anxiety and that can um be detrimental to your mental health. Okay, thank you, Rinda. Thank you. I'm Jaime, and to add on to what Miranda said, I feel like it could also cause burnouts, especially if you have to deal with all those things, and burnouts can, like, they can be, like, really bad, and, like, depending on who you are and how you deal with them, you could, like, maybe even develop depression or high anxiety from it. A burnout is, like, it's, like, when you, when you're overworked to a point where, like, you no longer can work, in a sense. It's, like, your brain is, like, Heated, right? Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm, I'm treasure. Uh, I also want to add on to that. Like, it can also cause for like mental breakdowns. Like, if we're, I mean, we're kids, so like, I feel like there's only so much you can handle at once. And like Rain just said, like having a job, doing extracurriculars, and then taking like part of classes. Like all of us, we all take really like we we're all in college classes, although we're in high school. So just adding all that on, it's just a lot of stress build up and not like knowing any resources or like knowing how to handle it could really like trigger like I guess a breakdown. Um uh I am the Shumbe. Um what comes to mind when I think of mental health is um literally how you're literally how you're doing up there. Like um, if like you're handling lots of things at once, um, you can have like there there's consequences, which is why you should take things one step at a time and not try to overwork yourself, as you guys have said, and it plays a huge role in the way in which you behave and create and can create things like mood swings and um more um effects. Uh, okay, basically, in a nutshell, um, I could say that um, it includes our emotions, um, our psychology, and also our social well-being. Because, um, yes, um, health issues can also be um, genetical. You can inherit them from um, your family. Um, they can also be like um, the chemicals inside your, your brain. Um, and also the surrounding that you you live in can also affect um, your well-being. Um, so uh, moving on now, um, I just want to know what does what stresses you out? What stresses you out as a student? You know, coming from different fam- families and backgrounds, what stresses you out? Um, I think Miranda again. I think knowing that you have to um, you have to try your best and like hustle every day to make sure that your parents like. Like my parents migrated here and I have to make sure that they didn't come here for no reason, like that their children are going to like make them proud and that they're going to be successful. So their migration and leaving their hometown was not a mistake. I think like my my like biggest thing is that I want to go to college and your grades, like our grades really matter, like when it comes to that. So trying to hold myself to such a high standard when I fail it, it just it really like stresses me out a lot. And I just, I don't know, I, I try really hard to keep my grades up and failing that is just, it causes stress, just, yeah. Um, I'm Kuja and I would say, um, I grew up in a place where like people were struggling financially. So I see how people were just struggling so much and I'm just afraid for myself to like end up like that. So it just kind of stress you. Just want to try your hardest to just make the better future for yourself and family. Or, well, Jaime, again, but for me, it's like, it's similar to Miranda's where my parents are immigrants, my parent is an immigrant, and so now I'm, like, I have to be the doctor of the family and make a lot of money to make them proud. Uh, I 
my name isn't my name. Both my first and last name isn't. My last name belongs to my father. My first name belongs to my grandfather. I'm not allowed to drag it into the mud, as they would say. And I have to succeed them in order to be worthy of that name. And I have to like go to college and be really successful. I have to get scholarships. I have to have like hundreds. And if a hundred's not even good enough in my family, I have to even succeed a hundred in my family to be acknowledged. Otherwise you're called a, a disgrace in my family. So that's like what stresses me out. Yeah. Um, my name's Tiana and like what everybody else basically was saying, we have a lot of stress from our parents to make us want to do better. My parents, my grandparents, my great grandparents, none of them went to college. Um, so it's really like even my cousins, none of them really went to college. So it's basically up to me to do something with myself. Oh, adding on to what Tiana said, I kind of go through the same stuff. And it's like, <clears throat> it's like the pressure if you don't feel like it, it's, it's a scary thing. And I feel like the pressure that they place on you to be better than what they are, it's, it's, it's annoying and I don't think that they should do it. But that right there is one of the biggest things that can cause stress. Like the pressure feeling, like Jaime said, they're, they're trash like your name even though they didn't do it. What stresses you guys out? Uh, my name is Raul. So like basically what stresses me out is obviously my parents sometimes or my peers. But like my parents pressure me in such a way like of comparing me with other children that they might not know well or that I know well. Like that's what stresses me all the time. My name is Asisipo and what stresses me out is that when I think of my future, um, sometimes things don't go as planned. So this stresses me when I think of it. Yeah. Guys, my name is Namcha. So this year I'm doing grade nine and I have to choose subjects for next year, subjects that I want to continue doing. So I'm scared that my marks won't qualify for the subjects I want to do for next year. What is so I'm doing grade eight at Tika Senior Secondary School. Um, what stresses me out are the expectations expectations and pressure to do well at school from parents and family and so another thing that stresses me apart from my parents it's obviously my school teachers they have a lot of expectations which sometimes i might not meet because they do not teach me much as i want to be teached and also my peers sometimes they also do stress me a lot expecting me to do things that i'm not possible to do can I hear some examples? And comes to my peers, like, for example, tomorrow they say, let's go out and play um, games like PlayStation. When I say I can't, I can't go there, they'd be like, nah, bro, you promised us. Or like, nah, you, you ain't cool anymore just because you can't come with us. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, can I add on to what he said? Yeah, um, another, like, to add on what you said, our teachers really stress us out. Like, our preach to you. Our, this class right here, we're all in super public policy. We recently just had a module that I was stressing about. Everybody here was stressing about. And I'm pretty sure I feel it. Oh, <laughs> I, get a, I get a lot of pressure from my peers as well because I, I don't know why, but I compare myself to all of them at this table and a lot of more kids. Just like standard wise, our grades, our athletics, or whatever we be doing, and it's a lot. Oh, and now another thing this wasn't stressing me out before, but now it is. I'm the only girl on the track team. <laughs> yeah, Kucha don't want to join me. So it's not, it's I'm, I'm just standing with myself and it's stressing me out because I got to do stuff with like the other, like the voice okay. team, and it's, it's just terrible. The way they act towards each other or the way they just call out girls, it's just not true. Adding on to what she said, um, okay, so <laughs> let's start with the public policy. The class, the module, it's stressful, and but it's good for us because I feel like it's teaching us like, like teaching us what things are gonna be like in a sense when we all graduate next year. Like we're not gonna be able to depend on the teacher and whatnot, but yeah it's just the only thing that really makes everything stressful is when everything builds up on top of each other that's that's what makes it stressful the class alone it's a lot of work but that's kind of what we all signed up for it's just adding on and then the teachers it just makes it a lot plus like like tiana said with sports like i'm 
the captain of my basketball team this year. So I have to like guide and and they expect so much out of me. I feel like I have to like guide and mentor like the whole team. And it's just a lot to do with trying to be a kid and like play PlayStation with my friends or whatever. Like I don't have time to exactly do that. Um, can I ask, does um your school mm -hmm. or your community have a lot of job opportunities after your second education or you have to continue after your secondary education? From my perspective, like South Africa basically does not provide a lot of job opportunities. Like we gotta we gotta hustle and make jobs for ourselves. For instance, we gotta do it for the cam, do it for the gram, we do TikTok to to end cash because like we know there's not a lot of jobs around South Africa. Isn't forever for individuals. Do you guys have a backup plan? There is um another way in which you can like um, earn a little money like some of us here in the community like start car washes where people go there to get like their cars washed and then they pay a little money and they make small um salons to get their hair done and you know that helps a lot and so and it kind of like equips you with the with the things um, and the knowledge you need to become like a successful entrepreneur. Yeah. Find a way to earn cash instead of like doing a service. You could earn cash at home by just doing Forex trading or like doing digital marketing or scrolling through, through uh, TikTok to, to earn cash, watch videos for free. That's free cash, sitting at home doing nothing. Thank you. Um, oh, um, to add on what they have said, um, and also to answer your question, our government right now um, plans or focuses on um, building opportunities for 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 the youth. Um, if if you if you are the first year or after metric or a second year, you have to you have to um, volunteer. You have to you know seek for jobs in clubs you know be a bartender be a waitress be you know in restaurants that's how um some of our um friends youth um get a little cash like having to become like a teacher or a doctor or a nurse is that attainable for you guys it's, um it is um attainable um, I think um unemployment um in South Africa to be specific is a very huge um um think um like the youth um here in South Africa is unemployed um I'm one example of that I have graduated but um still now till now I am not having any unemployment so um uh, it is um it is a very you know jobs are scarce let me just put it like that jobs are scarce and um we have like a lot of graduates um, that's why people uh, want to go abroad, you know, coming to the States um, to try find jobs. And also there's um, teaching English abroad is one thing that um, our youth is considering. Um, and it's not part of what we have planned um, in our future, but um, it's because you don't know what to do anymore. You know, you end up doing things that you never you never planned or imagined um, I'm doing. So, yeah, unemployment rate is very high. Okay, um, so there are a lot of um uh, types of um mental um issues or illnesses um that we can talk about. For instance, um, when I was doing my research, you know, um, about mental in um illness or issues, I found out that um. It affects everyone, you know, from an early age. Um, when I was looking at the stats, um, that um at an age of thirteen, um, a child can kill. Um, himself or herself, you know, at that age. And you know that um, that's mental illness, you know. And um, I've also I've also noticed that um, something that I did not know that I do have, and it's part of the mental issue, um, OCD, the obsessive um, compulsive disorder. I did not know that um, it's one of the mental um, illnesses, you know. And, you know, um, Getting to know those types of um, issues, um, mental issues and illnesses, um, I, I got to a point that when I was speaking with my learners here that um, actually, yes, everyone is affected by this, whether you're in an early age, you know, 
adolescent stage, um, teenager and adult. And we experience that a lot in our families, but it's just that we can't pinpoint, okay, my mother is having depression or anxiety. But now I want us to take this opportunity so that we know that um, <clears throat> we are all affected by this and we need to take care of ourselves. Yeah. I can agree. I struggle from anxiety and like, Anxious feelings aren't something you need to be diagnosed with. Like anybody can be anxious. Like that relates a lot to stress. And like recently I started seeing like a therapist and that's helped a lot. And I think there's like a big stigma around that. So like all y'all, everybody like therapy is okay. Being anxious is okay. And I think it comes from like taking care of yourself. Like you said, like that's something I've been working on recently of like saying no to things so that I'm not too busy or like, over anxious about having to do so many things because sometimes that can relate to like expectations people have like we were talking about expectations earlier of like people expecting me to do different events different um, assignments and all that so it really comes from like just having good mental health in general like taking care of yourself you know self-care making sure you're sleeping enough eating enough um yeah. there's a lot of different levels to it and it's like we don't really think about mental health until it becomes like poor mental health. Like when there's an illness, when there's a diagnosis, um, you like, when you think of mental health, you think of like um, depression, anxiety, OCD, like bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, like all the big things, but really everybody has mental health and it needs to be good mental health. Um, even if you like don't have a diagnosis or anything like that. Um, to add on to that, I would say it's very hard for people to like seek help. You know, sometimes it kind of might come as embarrassing or something. So people just keep going and struggling with it. Some of them are just so much harder to diagnose than others. Um, do you have any support from school? Uh, maybe when it comes to mental issues, maybe you see one of your friends or whoever. Do you have support from your school? That we do have a lot of support systems at school, but like um everybody said it's kind of like some people just don't want to reach out because they feel some people feel embarrassed or some people don't think it's like a big deal like i know a few people including myself that would just let it like bottle up inside because they don't want to talk to nobody about it so yeah. and i think when you have like other priorities your mental health comes second to it so you really don't make that time for it and some of the, and if you like delay it for a long period of time, then it's gonna like affect your initial priorities, which is why like your physical health is as treatable as your mental health. So it should take like you go to the doctors yearly for a, a, um, a checkup if that's if you guys do that same thing in South Africa. And maybe we can incorporate that year the mental checkup at your physical checkups as well. Adding on to what Tiana said. I'd say we have resources here, like particularly at our school, we have um, a psychologist and um, we also have social workers. And even I'd say my guidance counselors this year have been so helpful to my mental health, honestly. As I said, for me, I do not have any support from other people. What I just do is like take a chair and sit in front of a mirror and then act like two different people talk to myself and see like what's wrong with me and then that that feels like I'm talking to someone even though I'm just sitting and watching at the mirror and looking my reflection so uh adding on to what I was saying um yeah like at our school particularly we have resources but like the psychologists and our social workers and stuff but specifically this year guidance counselors I feel like that like the the ones that we have especially they, they, they've been honestly so much help and I feel like it's very easy to go talk to them because I feel like they can probably relate one of the biggest stresses we have right now is school and like applying to colleges and really mapping out what our future is gonna be like this is like the last like time to do it and I feel like um they've just been a huge help with like just being patient with us just like listening to our concerns and trying their best to help us and yeah I really appreciate them for that but um that's that's like that's our resources for that like for schooling but our psychologist and even the guidance counselors and our social worker and we also have that one lady on the side but I don't know what her title is but like you can go to them for counseling like they can pull you out of class and you can have counseling with them if needed even like it doesn't have to be related to school it can be related to 
just anything in your personal life or anything that you want to talk about really yeah I will just like add on to that of like we do have some really good people but like there's also not enough support staff for all the students we have like there seems to be like a little bit of a, a lack and that was like a whole topic of discussion of like the district hired a bunch of more counselors but like we still need more counselors in schools and like in general like there's like a large um gap between people who need therapy and like people who are able to provide therapy um so like there's a lot of gaps between like there's not enough um people support like just in general in the united states um there's like all the therapists are like really booked um, there's just like a little bit of a lack for mental health like support. And one more thing I actually wanted to add on, which kind of relates to what Tiana said when she was like, like people just don't reach out to those resources when they feel like they're mental health. I feel like another reason because of that is like with with some like people like guidance content stuff and all whatever you tell them doesn't always stay with them. And I feel like knowing that you don't have that trust with them would like stop you from going to them like I know at my middle school that used to be a big thing like you would tell the guidance counselor something and then next thing you know you got somebody pulling you out of class to like actually follow up questions about it and it's like you trusted that person with that information so I feel like that's like why some of the resources aren't used even though they're limited sometimes they're not used by certain students probably because of that oh nice interesting I think um what we experience the side, we are sharing the same sentiments in the sense of um, we don't reach out to the resources that we have. Um, for example, I did not know that they do have a psychologist in their school, um, but um, at some point um, from our backgrounds, we we grow up, we, we grow up in homes um, being told that uh, you need to be strong. That's the only thing we are told. You need to be strong. So um, whatever issue or situation you face, you just tell yourself that you need to be strong. And then um, as you grow up now, um, the mental health um, or issue, it gets worse and worse and worse. And then um, you end up doing things like thinking about suicide, you know, and all that. And mostly um, it affects um, the guys, you know, at the age that I am in now, um, there are a lot of guys committing suicide this side um, because they don't talk, you know, and the help is there. We do have social workers. We do have psychologists, but it's just that they don't reach out to those people and they keep things inside themselves. And now when it's full blown now, people start um, don't know where to tend to, you know, their families. And then they start getting sick, um, people going to the psychiatrist, you know, because they have mental mental illnesses now and you need to get treatment and all that stuff. So um, that being told when you are a kid that you need to be strong, you know, um, at some point, yes, it does help us, but um, it, it does, it's not good uh, because there are consequences as we grow up. I think a lot of us since mental health has been like a very a re a relevant topic now we can see the effects of not taking care of your mental health through our parents if our parents are super like just work every day don't not very conversational you can see the effects that their parents our grandparents they do the mental health was never a conversation back then but now that we see we can see like we can reflect off of their the consequences we see and then like use that to motivate us to make sure that we take care of our mental health I talk about it much or it's not really heard of much until it's bad like I feel like I don't really think about my mental health or nothing like that till I'm like super stressed out or I'm just like like the water is overflowing the bucket or like I don't know I feel like I don't think about it as much until it's up there and like that's why I know like there's there's lots of people who take like mental health days even like universities and stuff like that they give like mental health days to to give a break and I feel like sometimes I try to think of it, but I still don't think it's like talked about anymore. Hey guys. Um, I think there's just like a large stigma, especially around like men's mental health as well. There's a large stigma. Mental health is something I'm passionate about. Like um, they were talking about their modules, which is like a project we did in history. And like mine was on the subject of mental health. Um, my goal is to study um behavioral health, which relates to like mental illnesses. Um, so like I find it really interesting and like they were saying a lot of the time it builds up 
like people are diagnosed with anxiety or depression until it gets really bad and it's really common. Um, so like, I think it definitely needs to like be more a part of like the conversation, even like just like crying randomly, like it's okay to cry. Like, I think there's just a lot of like stigma and opinions around like keeping it to yourself and really it should be like a part of the conversation when you can say like, oh, I got this bad test grade and now I'm like sad about that or I'm not feeling good. Um, just like, it's okay to have bad days um okay do you guys have like um in your curriculum like mental health whereby you guys in class you talk about it well, I, think it's Belayed, that boss is departing. I think Isn't it's Belayed, to the office, please. i think it's not really part of our curriculum but a lot of us it since it affects most of us that it just comes out like a lot of time we get off topic when, like, we're supposed to be focusing on something but then our teacher including our students we just ramble about like this is happening in our day and then the, the conversation continues and then so like i would say like half of the week i've heard a conversation about mental health in my classes but it wasn't like planned it was just sporadic and spontaneous so yeah, yeah I think are you glad yes yeah, so a lot of us develop like um relationships with our teachers and we're like comfortable enough with them like i know there's some teachers in the school that like i go to like when i'm not doing well um like they have today today i was really anxious um and um one of my favorite teachers saw me in the hallway and they like just um give me a hug and it was it was good it's like helpful so like i think it just comes up a little bit more in conversation now especially with like the increased grades after COVID 19 um so i think it's just it's slowly and slowly becoming more conversational it's not in the curriculum yet i think it should be um but that's my personal opinion they tried to implement it in the curriculum especially over covid19 when we were all online they tried to implement it they called it social emotional learning it was a 15 minute period on our day with one of our teachers. Um, SEL, yeah, oh, so it stands for SEL. that's social yeah, emotional general. learning. But that was just during COVID because they were trying to like get people to connect more. But a lot of time the teachers didn't have training for it. So it wasn't that it wasn't the greatest. <laughs> It was productive, yeah. It was a time just to sit and do what you want. It was kind of like a chill time, which that I feel like it still needed sometimes just to have a little break, like in the class, but it wasn't nothing like let's sit down, let's talk about how you're feeling, and just free time. Right. Um, and I was going to say, like, sometimes our teachers would skip over it. Like, I know Brown Text would skip over it sometimes. I know Kunif would skip it because he's like, yeah, math yeah, is more important. Teachers. But but as far as Jones, he never used yeah, to. He never he stopped. We had an English teacher. He never like skipped our SEL social emotional learning time. We it was used, just chill time. It wasn't like productive emotional learning. We did but productive it was he only used to, to okay. I don't, don't want to say that. I'm uh, he used to say that. Oh, like, he, he, so do they have it in their curriculum? Yeah, yeah, it. Do you guys often talk about mental health in your classes? Um, sometimes. Um, in our life orientation class, there's a chapter in the first quarter which talks about self concept, self um, motivation, self esteem, um, and things like that. And things like that. And they encourage you on how to like. Um, build up your self esteem and be a confident person. Yeah, basically there is like a part, but it's it's a small it's a small chapter, but I feel like they should implement it more. So like the the teacher the teachers could relate with what they're teaching us, so that they could also learn in another way, and we could also learn and we could talk like about our experiences and what like what problems we've had in the past or in the present. COVID-19 pandemic, were you guys just regularly going to school or did the country just shut down and you guys were having learning at home or just didn't learn at all? Um, there was some schools which were um 
divided into like let's say um let's say a school would be divided into let's say blue and green blue would come on certain days and then green would also come on certain days to avoid um the spread of the virus but learning did go on but um like precautions were taken to be this to be safe our, our school system was something similarly like that. In the beginning, like when the pandemic had first started, we did kind of go on lockdown and didn't really have school. It was just kind of teach yourself, I feel like. But like when we had open back up for our freshman year of high school, it was like online, completely online for a month. But then we had uh, the hybrid thing where some people would go on for Tuesdays and Thursdays. Some people go to school on Tuesdays and Thursdays and some people will go on school for Mondays and Wednesdays. And then Friday, everybody was at home. So that was like our way of learning for like basically that whole school year, I think, right? Yeah. Hi guys, my name is Kamva uh, KV. Um, also at that time I was doing grade 11 um, the outbreak started in March 2010, 2020, when the president um, uh, spoke on the lockdown, whereby everything like the economy, schools here in South Africa stopped at that time. So um, what happened is that we were, we were unable to go to school around that time until they, because um, there were different types of stages of the lockdown um they were called different stages whereby it 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 varies from a stage whereby it's more dangerous to be outside to a stage it's least dangerous to be outside so during that time only only grade 12 people who are doing grade 12 were allowed to go to school other grades had to stay in lockdown till it was july meaning the second semester and then everyone was back to school and they were doing these colors whereby some certain half of the learners at school had to go on monday on monday and the other have to go on tuesday so it was a division like that and also some of the exams which we did we were supposed to write during that time of the lockdown down where we're given as assignments for us and other people use tablets to go to 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 use for school yeah okay yeah hello guys my hello. name is Sia. hi just to add on to what he said i was doing my trick that year and yeah i can say it was a very difficult period for well the lower grades of course because we attended school as usual Classes Monday to Friday, extra classes Saturday and Sundays. The pandemic didn't stop us from going to school or learning or whatever. We had to take some precautionary measures, of course, social distancing and all that, but we remained in school as usual, except for the lower grades. So yeah, we learned a lot. Expand on the the extra classes on Saturdays and Sundays, because I know for us, we don't, we don't have nothing like that when we to school to take more classes on the weekends that's like our yeah so they're like extra classes to support you know learners and all that and just to cover up the just to cover up the what is this called the school the syllabus yeah the syllabus yeah and uh i don't know just to manage time because we had really short time to cover all that we had to cover during that year and we had to have like extra classes just so we could catch up and be on time for our final examinations and right that's what the extra classes were for additional hours for learning additional things so you guys you know you guys have um like final exams for each class at like the grade school level yeah every november october to november those are final examinations we write like two in a year First one's at June to July and the others, well, October to November. Um, Just to add on to what he's saying, basically we have four terms in a year. Um, Each term takes three months. So um, the second term, which is um, um, from uh, it's January, February, and March, then that's the first term we close. And then April, May, June, 
that's the second term. And then during the second term, um, they write exams, which are the media exams. And then there's the third term and also the fourth term. And then on the fourth term, they write um, their final exams. You guys don't have like any time off of school. Like we are in school from, like we have school, we don't have school from like June to um, September. Like we have the we end in June and then we start again in September, so we have July and August completely off. Unless you're in summer school because you didn't pass the 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 year before. Wow, that is luxury. Uh, yeah. uh, the longest holiday we have um is in December, um where we close on the fourth term. Yes, we and then we open in January to start our first term of the following year. As far as our schooling goes, well, first I'm going to touch on like the exam thing. I wouldn't say we have like final exams at like the high school level so much. I mean, for our grades. No, but as far as us, we're all in smart class. So we do have final exams for our college classes, the class we take at um, the university. But as far as like, I mean, we have something similar to that at the end of each school year for certain classes, we have to take like what's a regents exam, which it's kind of like a final, but like if you fail and you still, like if you fail the test and you still pass the class, like it counts for something. But to graduate high school, we need to pass, um, re we need to pass like, what is it? One, one English, English three one math. social studies, three math. three math, and three science, right? Yeah. yeah. And one, like, other one, too. I think. A one oh, language. language yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, and one yeah, language. So, yeah, that's, that's like, for the bare minimum degree. But to get um an advanced regents diploma, I think you need, like, seven. You need, three. like, two histories, one English three yeah, maths, exactly. three sciences, and the language. Yeah, but during COVID, that was kind of like shifted because like we didn't have to take those. If we passed the class, we just passed, like we, we got exempt from that. And as far as 21, when we came back to school, um, we had like, if you got between a like 50 and 65 on the regions, it like, they would like basically curve it and like pass you for it so it was like COVID kind of bent it which yeah like yeah so it was 50 to I think to compare like during COVID year the standards really dropped so kids were easy it was easier to pass classes and the goal with that was this district wanted as many people to pass as possible so they really lowered their standards a lot so like Everybody basically, nobody could really fail during COVID. Um, but it seems like you guys had the same standards, if I'm understanding correctly, that you still had the same amount of schools, same amount of standards for passing and whatnot. Um, yeah, and also this side, um, so, so, some of the, the the requirements were in too hard to pass because, like, I remember when we were doing grade 11 in 2020, um, during that time, there, there was a time whereby we couldn't do some of the work which was for the term which is almost like three months that's a period that's a period of three months of work so everyone the following year was um when everyone went to grade 12 because like they didn't have like street rules or on not passing and passing because they understand it um the situation in everyone yeah so it was the same thing that you had on your side. Are there any language requirements in South Africa? Language requirements. Um, yes. Um, when you have to pass exams this side, you have to um you have to pass your home language. You you do you do two languages, you do the home language and also first additional language. And English is the first additional language, or you can take it as your home language. Um you you have to pass those two and also you have to pass maths. So you gotta pass three out of seven and also one um one from the from the other uh seven which is the other four yeah and for for what's your like grading scale like out of 10 points 
how many at the minimum do you need to pass? Yeah, we didn't have points. We have levels. So the levels is from one to seven. And the level seven is the outstanding one. And then um one and two means fail. So if you got a level three on your subject or your module, that means you passed. Like in a percentage, is that like 50% of the work is correct or 40%? Oh, it's 40%. Level three is 40% to 49. Yeah, ours is 65%. 65% it's yeah. level, five. level five. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's level five. What is the like the stigma of like American schooling in South Africa? Like, do you think the schooling in America is very lenient and easy, or is it more like rigorous and difficult? Like, what's your opinion? They do not lack in resources. Um, they have like the best education. They have no flaws and things like that. Yeah, we we think of American schools better than like most of ours yeah so basically what i think of american schools like as mentioned like they are much more advanced and they have like what can i say they have the more subjects for example if you want to be an it specialist in the near future you could go into it whilst you are still starting high school whilst in south africa you gotta do your normal subjects and then you can choose IT when you get to varsity. A lot of colleges and university, which is like where we'll go after we graduate, and there's definitely a lot of options there. You have to like apply to get in, and then obviously you probably heard about like the like student debt and loans, like a college, those types of classes after you graduate are quite ex expensive. So there's not every student gets to. Um, some people just go straight into the workforce, and then you can have like trade school as well. Um, your your guys' um picture has, is frozen, but can you guys raise your hands and, and to see who's gonna carry on after the secondary education? You will see. Can you count how many there is out of the total amount? Uh, most of us in the house here. Um, we we really want to go to varsity because um, after high school. Um, I think that's where we choose what we really want, you know, um, our career paths. So, um, yeah, I think everyone in the house um, just wants to go to varsity because that's where you choose what you want to be and what you want to do. Yeah, that's the same here. We all, we all want to go. Yeah. And for most of us, it is an opportunity that isn't far. It's very attainable for for most of us, there's like community colleges that accept most of us. So it isn't like, it's not really, if we can go, it's more like which one is going to accept us, like prestige. I have a question. What's a community college? What's a community college? A college that's based in your community. So we live in um, Onondaga community. So our college is Onondaga Community College. And it's a college that has a very high acceptance rate that will accept at anyone at any age that is it's able to go, just to, to get their higher education. Like you could be a nurse from OCC, you can be a teacher, you can go on after OCC. So, speech. so the, the idea of the community college is that it's local. So a lot of people who that go to community colleges go to the community college in their area. Um, so a lot of it is you can stay at your house and commute to the college campus. Nowadays, there are some college housing so you can stay on campus, but that wasn't a thing like a few years ago. Um, it's just a two year school. So you get your associate's degree. Um, four years is your bachelor's, six years is your master's. Um, and then beyond that, you have your PhDs, which can take eight to 12 years, depending. Um, so the community college is like the baseline is for, it's a lot cheaper than um, other universities. Um, and it's for, a lot of people don't necessarily know what they want to do. So it's like the beginning, there's a lot of general education studies there. Um, so it's kind of like the baseline. It's like a stepping stone for yeah, it's further like, education. Yeah, it's a stepping stone. Um, can I ask you something? So like, 
which like university or college would you guys prefer in America that you would go to that like offers what you want to do in the future? Well, I, I don't know if anyone here is 100% sure on what college they want to go to, but one, one of a uh, school that has really piqued my like interest is uh, St. John Fisher. I, I really, they, they have, it's a university in like Rochester, which is like an hour away from here. And I really like that they have like a program where you can walk out with your four-year degree and um, a doctoring degree in pharmacy. And like, I think it's six years you can do that. And that's something that like, if you go a different route could take like eight, nine years, I think. So that school and university at Buffalo have, they, that's like two hours away from here. And they have a similar program like that. So those two schools have. If you guys are interested in studying abroad, we have a university in our own city called Syracuse University that accepts a lot of international students and you will be welcome there. It's a little prestigious though. That one's a little expensive. But that's like that's like one of the bigger universities. So like we obviously we talk about community colleges. Then like the next level is like a SUNY college, which is um state colleges, the state um runs. So those are like again less expensive. Some of them are four years, some of them are two. Some of them you can just go for a certificate, which is one. And then you have your universities, which are like four. And then a lot of universities is where you get your masters. Um and then, like, the top level is, like, the prestigious schools. We call them Ivy Leagues. So there's six Ivy Leagues, um, which are, like, they're quite expensive. You have to have really good grades to get into those schools. Um, I don't know if any of us are going for an Ivy. I think a lot of us will attend a university. I think a lot of us are staying in state. It costs more to go to college out of your area than it does to go to college um, outside of your state. Um, I don't know. You know else Harvard wants. is cheaper than us. Harvard is cheaper. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do any y'all want to share your college plans? Okay, I'm going to see the tree. Oh. Um, a few colleges. Well, I recently just did a college research essay for one of my classes. A few colleges that's on my list right now. A Syracuse University, like one of them they just said, and a few HBCUs with stands for historical black colleges that we have here in the United States. A lot. Most of them are along the East Coast. Uh, one of them that I'm interested in is North Carolina at a and I have a cousin who goes there. They have a really good engineering program. And yeah. um, I'm really interested in Vassar College. It's in state. And they have a really good chemistry um program and a lot of clubs. Okay. I'm interested in Cornell. They have a really cool uh, bioengineering program and like their medical stuff is like really cool. I know like SU has medical stuff as well, but Cornell's just like like their medical facility is so awesome. Cornell's an Ivy, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Randy, did you say? Uh, I don't. I don't want to jinx this on this Is it okay? We want to introduce you to our basketball team. You want to say hi to our basketball team? That would like, be lovely. Uh, yes, please. But they are a girls' basketball team, so come on in. Yeah. <laughs> basketball team. <laughs> what? We say basketball. Basketball. W N D A. Oh, and we included, but I don't know. Want to introduce her team? Syracuse University. Introduce. Yes, there. She has SU1, yeah. Introduce. Yeah, it is. Um, okay. um, well, this is Ellie. Um, Hi, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. She's a, she's a um, I guess like a three, maybe four guard. Um, <laughs> yeah, small forward, I guess. And then this is. Um, this is Skittles. Um, she's like a she's a guard as well, shooting guard, two three. And then this is Caroline. Um, she's like a point guard or a shooting guard. And then Myra's like. <laughs> she's like the, um, I know. Huh? Anyways, um, Myra's like a 
two, three. She's really a sinner. She's really a sinner. She's really a sinner. She's 30 a game. <laughs> and yeah, then there's me. Um, I'm I'm like a. They try to say I'm a one, but I'm really like a two for real. I'm a shooting guard specifically, but I, I'm just like kind of a all around guard for the team. Yeah. Sorry, we interrupted with the team, but I thought you should see some of our athletes. Hello. Hello. Awesome. Thank nice to meet you guys. Thank you. You're like yeah. cute. Who's the best player? Who's the best player? <laughs> No, Michael Jordan, LeBron James. Right, yeah. Yeah. Oh, how does social media impact mental mental wealth, mental yeah. health? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. It impacts it um in a lot of ways, but I will outline the advantages. You know, with the negative impacts that they have on mental health. I mean. Some people can be, well, dependent on social media, as you call it, and they could sometimes kind of forget their reality and just be too focused on their social life, thinking that, you know, with all the followers and all the whatever hardness you got going on on your social media, well, who's the mad guy? Um, I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention another, um, negative, um, effect of social media. Um, when you're like, when you are maybe, let's say online and you're watching videos of models and, um, people, celebrities who are living the best lives, there is a, like a high chance that people compare themselves to those celebrities and um, also would want to engage in the activities being done by those celebrities. Um, and this could sometimes affect them negatively because like if let's say a person is physically challenged, um, I don't want to say this, but let's say the person is a bit chubby, he, he, the, he or she might feel um, uh, a bit... Um, she, she might be he or she might be discouraged and 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 she ha and she would he or she would have a low, very low self-esteem and would try very much to change that which would like also impact her mental well mental well-being very badly. Uh, also, social media does have a lot of impacts in our lives. But what can I say about social media is that, like, most of us teenagers do like to stay on our phones because of, like, social media. For me, instance, like, sometimes in the morning, like, I wake up and then watch, like, YouTube videos. And then, like, I end up procrastinating and, and don't want to wake up and go watch or get ready for school just because I'm on social media. Kind of for most of us, I think if you can say we're kind of like addicted in a way. Like every like you go to bed, you look on your phone. You wake up, you go on your phone, and it can like distract you from your priorities and like lower your performance in like school and sports and extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. which is very negative for our future. Yeah, it's a very big distraction. Like all the notifications people get, um, like they check their phone during class, but they should be sleeping. Um, I guess, like, I don't know. I know, like, a lot of statistics just because, like, mental health is, like, my thing. So I, like, know quite a bit of, like, statistics around it. Like, I know, like, we have, like, a lot of, like, eating disorders and, like, parenting and, like, females here in America that come from, like, social media. Um, so, like, that's a, that's a big impact. There's, like, direct connections with social media linking to, like, the increased rates of anxiety and depression. Um. So yeah, but actually our state is working on some laws that would try and try and um lower those amounts of stress rates and anxiety and depression that comes from the social media usage. Um okay guys, can I ask just one question um that is not uh, in line with the topic that we have? Would you guys uh want to come to South Africa? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay.
Are you afraid or? Are you afraid? No. No. Not really. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> Bad afraid. laughing. Afraid of what? Yeah, afraid of like. What are, what are, are we afraid of? Should what we? specifically? Oh. Should we? You don't know. What do you know about South Africa? What do you know about South Africa? I know, um, that, came from there. I know that you guys in schools are guarded with like the wire and stuff because y'all talk. <laughs> That's what they say. Uh, not all of them. Mm, that is true though. I mean, okay. I don't know. I think me personally, Why? we had, um, I'm in the media program and we've had media students go to South Africa before. Um, so I've seen like their opinions and they all had like a lot of fun visiting the people there um, with the students, um, seeing some animals and enjoying the, the warm weather that you guys have over there. So, I mean, I'm just a travel person in general. I love traveling places. I like discovering new places. So I would totally, I would, if we had the chance, I would, I would like to come over like Meeting all of y'all would be really cool. Um, I think experiencing like your culture and your language um, would be interesting. I'm sure you guys would want to like come over here and discover things as well, explore a little bit. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Um, do we have any questions from the floor, the side that we want to ask? Because uh, I think we are approaching the end now. You get to do a bit of IT. You get to, um, you get to be a developer. You get to learn coding, computer languages, and it's all in all fun. You know, so it's a fun thing to do. So my career, I want to be a basketball player for real. So like coming to the states would be a major upgrade because like there are a lot of opportunities. If you don't get to the like NBA, you could obviously go to division one where you could also play ball um if um if maybe i don't make it as um uh, a programmer i might take up the career of an um, entrepreneur um it's it's also a very nice um topic um you get you 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 get to learn all the essential skills of a biz of creating and running a business and the things like the threats the opportunities and things like that and it 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 also is very important for when you like maybe let's say you're unemployed you can with the with the knowledge you've obtained you can really put it to good use and implement it by um you know creating your own small business to earn a little money you know <clears throat> yeah yeah as mentioned like if you if one career doesn't always go like go to success you could always have a plan b but like my plan b is to be like become a chef uh, and coming to the states i could like go to some culinary schools because i've heard so much that there are so much culinary schools in the u.s yeah um talking about plan b's and all that um yeah i'm already um a varsity student and i'm doing my second year but um having the dream of going to university in high school like in still school um it's kind of like different from when you were dreaming back in school than being in university because um as time goes the 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 dream of being something else just um goes away and then just something new comes out me meaning plan b because like um i wanted to do aeronautical engineering before going to university which deals with aerospace and rockets and all that but only to find out there's only one varsity that offers um aerospace and aerial 
nautical engineering here in South Africa, which is words. And then um, aerospace and aeronautical engineering is the most thing that is evident in USA. That's the most course um, that you can get in most of the universities universities out there so um dreaming <laughs> dreaming to become something at the early age just changes when times goes up because like you have to come up with a plan b meaning the plan b for me was computer science you know in order to major into engineering yeah Um, I, I think um, in South Africa, Plan B is very important. <laughs> it's very important. Um, for instance, myself, I I did BSc, which is Bachelor of Sciences. I I started until my master's level, but at this point, I am unemployed. So I think Plan B is very important. And now I am working at the after school space. So um, if you don't have plan B, you, you definitely have to have one because it's very important. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I have a question. Can I ask what, what your careers, what your career interests are? Sure, I can go. Um, so I'm planning on going to get my bachelor's and then my master's, which would be about six years of schooling. Um, I'm going to study behavioral health with a minor in um, business. Um, so my goal with that is to work in nonprofits relating to behavioral health and maybe one day even start my own um, business like you were talking about, um, just a small business, um, probably artsy. So, um, I'm going to major in biochemistry at the university and then I'm going to move on and hopefully get accepted into med school and then from there I'm going to... Depending my residency in family medicine. Right. Um, like Miranda, I want to um, go to medical school at the university and I'm hoping to become an anesthesiologist. Mm. After, so like Kuja and Miranda said, I also want, I mean, I, if bioengineering doesn't work out, I'm going to go to medical school, school and become either a family doctor or become a surgeon. Mm. Um, if I don't get accepted to SU for architecture, and I'm going to a different school for computer science and minoring in um, neuroscience. Interesting. Um, I think, Zena, um, in the same field as you are, I did biochemistry. It's, it's such an interesting course. It's very interesting. I love it, too. Um, with that being said, guys, I think now we can wrap it up. Um, Besides what was happening today, I don't know, technology-ish, uh, it was bad today. But um, with that, I hope that we have learned something. Um, we have learned a lot from you guys uh, about mental health and the issues that you guys are facing. And it seems like um, uh, we have similarities there, you know, parents, teachers, you know, school, and the stigma around whereby... Um, we don't use the resources that we have. Um, at the end of the day, we need to look at um, after ourselves, you know, health-wise, um, so that our mental health can be good. So with that being said, um, thank you guys for this opportunity. And we hope to see you next year. Um, on this side, uh, we... Um, it's our last um, podcast for the year uh, because we are approaching to finish our final exams and then our schools will be closed uh, for this year. And then we'll meet early next year. And um, I'll be reaching out to you, Katie, with the topics that we are going to um, talk about as early as next year. Thank you so much. Finals. Good luck on your exams. It was very nice meeting and talking with you. Nice meeting you guys.